Capturing student attention and providing access to learning at a student's optimal independent level is key to time on task and ultimate student success. Whether in groups or during independent work time, you can quickly and easily personalize teacher and student learning environments based on interests, independence, accommodations, and modifications for success. You'll notice on the screen, I have a student that is logged in. They can see their courses on the left, their assignments in the middle. They have current assignments, late assignments, and even revisions for interactive lessons. Another student might have something that is set for their interests and interactions and engagement styles. It's important to note that there's lots of things that can be modified to make sure students are engaged, active, and independent when teaching. And that is the focus of our session today. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this main dropdown for students. We're gonna to select Tommy, and we're gonna take a look at Tommy's settings tab. This applies for all students. We're gonna cover three different areas that you can modify settings for individual students, for your group as a whole, even your teacher settings for when you're doing group instruction. Let's take a look at this top section here. This is where you're gonna find the main student information. Often where you're gonna to come to reset usernames and passwords. So if a student transitions in or you have a new student added to your classroom, all of these pieces are right at your fingertips. If you are a Clever user, as a reminder, you'll have to check in with your Clever admin because they're using a different portal to pull in that information. As you scroll down, you'll see Play Mode. Play Mode is important for independence. Our default is self-select. Here, students are able to view and play activities that you've assigned. It's recommended for students who can navigate a little bit more independently. We also have an autoplay feature. This is recommended for students that need a little bit more support. Uh, maybe our students in younger grades or students that have difficulty with that independence moving from task to task or activity to activity. It just moves them through fluidly and independently. Underneath that, you'll see interaction options. Here we have red X prompts. We have the ability to turn those on and off, depending on what your student's level of support is. We have the ability to exit an activity. If you're finding that a student keeps leaving the program and you want to lock them in, you can go ahead and turn this off. Under matching type, this is an important one. This has to do with any question and answer features in Vizzle. The drag and drop is our default. So if you think about an iPad or a mouse, the student clicks on the answer and drops it to the question card, giving them a celebration or reinforcement. You can also change it to one click. This is one of my favorite features. It actually slows the student down. It reads the text to them and makes sure that they see all of the answer choices before they click and make a selection. One click, one tap with a finger or a mouse, and it's answering those questions as needed. Our two click, two steps. So kind of think about it as a space bar and an enter key. I'm going to go ahead and leave this at a drag and drop for now. Underneath, we have accessibility options. It's always important to read through a student's IEP if they have one, thinking about that most current documentation for required accommodations. Here you can toggle text-to-speech on or off. There's a toggle for switch and keyboard accessibility, JAWS or screen reader. You can change the text-to-speech features for rate, pitch, and volume. Thinking about a student that might have a hearing impairment, you can mop all of these features so that they're working as independently as possible. Change the student voice, and this is how the information reads back to that student who's playing them back. You can change the highlight of the text. You can even click the play sample if you'd like to really work through and see how things sound. You'll also find a toggle for the display accessibility widget. And turn that on off as needed. Here you're going to see those different themes. This is what the background looks like when the student logs in. Remember, they each have their own unique username and password. This is where those interests come into play. Thinking about Tommy, he loves dragons or camping. Maybe I have older students in a classroom and I want to work more like a work system. You can choose a solid color background. You're choosing based on the age and interest and engagement that's needed for the students in the classroom. So for Tommy, I'm gonna go ahead and click on dark green, one of his favorite colors for now. Underneath that, you're gonna find celebrations and reinforcers. This is what happens within the program when the student is answering questions and finishing activities. Celebrations are what happen at the end of a lesson. We have a simple style here that is just giving them a little activity complete. There is a drop down. We do have our interactive options. You can turn those on and off. You can click on the preview button to take a look and see what they're gonna feel like and look like. You can turn the sound effects on or off and even change those seasonal filters based on the time of year. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and just toggle this to simple. Our next set is reinforcers. 
reinforces things that happen after a student answers the question. It keeps them engaged and motivated. You can turn them all off, you can turn them all on, or you can customize it based on that student's interest level. Knowing what I know about Tommy, I can come in and select some things that I know that he might be interested in. Simply click on the little button in the corner. What's great is you can always click on the little plus button if you want to see a little play button, and it's going to give you a review of that animation there. So again, just a great way to kind of preview it and see if it's something your students might be interested in. Go ahead and turn on some or all. You'll find some more simple reinforcers at the bottom of the list here, reminding you to think about age and engagement. What does this look like when the student logs in? Thinking about all of the details that we've just set up here, we're going to run through. I'm going to log Tommy in so you can see what this looks like. At the top of the screen, I'm going to go ahead. The students are logging in exactly where the teacher does. Student enters their username and password or clicks to log in with Clever, and it's going to drop them on the screen. What you'll see here is in the background, I've got that green background. I have lessons that have been assigned per subject area on the left-hand side. So Tommy can independently come in and navigate to whatever classroom or section he's working on. This is a great way to set up independent work across the board. What is it that they're working on? Is it a targeted goal? Super simple. You'll also see current assignments. These are the things that are in his folder for this week. It even gives him a due date. There is a section for late assignments, so things that he hasn't finished but can go back and practice. And there's a revisions tab for custom student responses if we're creating a feedback loop. Know that there's different options here. Tommy can also come in and click the settings wheel at the top of his screen now, and he can make changes. Simply click on the theme. He's decided he wants the dragon theme. He can click on the reinforcers. Maybe he's decided that he wants to go ahead and turn all the little reinforcers off or have the simple ones. The student is now allowed to control those, keeping them focused and engaged. Simply click back on the home button and it's gonna update that screen appropriately. When the student clicks in to play, it's gonna grab that activity. I'm gonna go ahead and let Tommy work through this independently. As he's working on this particular lesson, he can click anywhere on the screen to hear or read back with the text-to-speech that's loaded. He can turn the pages and toggle independently. It's giving him the information that he needs. He's reading the story back. It's introducing the keywords that he's going to need for working on this individual lesson. And as he processes through, when he gets to the questions, it's presenting it with the correct number of choices based on that setup. As the student plays, they can click anywhere if they want to hear a card read back, or they can just simply drag and drop. So this is asking the question, what are the letters A, E, I, O, and U? These are our vowels. The student would drag and drop the card, and it's giving that simple reinforcement at the bottom of the screen. If I go back into my teacher settings, I'm going to go ahead and just make a few changes so you can see what the differences are. So maybe I have a student that needs a little bit more support. I can click on the autoplay feature. Underneath, I can choose whether I want them to have a prompt or whether I want to use that one-click autoplay. Down below, text-to-speech, I can change any of my voices or features down here. We can change that theme or that background celebration. To, we really want to customize it to make sure that the student is engaged and active in that learning. We'll go ahead and let's change this to the butterfly background for now. Coming through, you can change your celebration style at the end. Remembering all these little changes have an impact on that student engagement during learning. They have their celebrations checked off here. So we're ready to go. Enter that student's username and password, just like we did. And what you'll see is it's a simplified view. I now have my butterfly background. Instead of my panel on the left, the student can choose any subject area and it's going to launch them right into learning. As I click on the math section, it's going to go ahead and load it up. The student's going to get a big play button in the middle of the screen and it's going to go ahead and load that activity up. You can see with that text to speech, it's reading that text back for the student and they're going to continue navigating through. We will be learning about math for life. Let's see what you already know about math for life. What I want you to notice is it's automatically highlighting and reading the information back. So for a student that needs more text-to-speech or access to that information, it's providing it instantly. What is everyday life? Things people do each day. A place where work is done. A group of people who interact. A ruler. To put it to use. Notice it read back all five of my cards. All the student needs to do is click on the one that they want. What I love about this particular setup is that the student has to hear all the information before they can answer. I like this for group instruction too because it slows down impulsive students and allows everybody to participate. 
It's giving me my little simple celebration at the bottom of the screen and I'm just turning the page. Back to student settings. The focus of this is to understand that you can come in and change each of these student settings one at a time. Think about that level of independence and engagement and interest. You are in control for setting those things up and getting your students started successfully. If it's the beginning of the school year and you have a large caseload of students, whether it's 5, 10, 30, or maybe you're a speech therapist and you have 80 students, what I love here too is you can always go into your classroom tab now that you know what the settings do, and you can actually change all your settings as a group. If I have a group of students that all primarily need the same kinds of interactions, I can change everyone at one time. So you don't have to click on all 30 students separately. You can come in and change the appearance, whether it's the seasonal filter that you want to activate. And this is with our interactive celebrations. You can choose and click apply. Underneath, there's that red X prompt, your matching type. Maybe I know all of my students need to be using this one click autoplay or the drag and drop feature. Simply click the apply button. Maybe I know all of my students have IP set up and everyone is set with at least three choices. You can make that modification and it's going to apply it to all of the students on your caseload. Disable or enable the text-to-speech feature. You can even create a simplified password to make sure your students are logging in simply and easily. The idea here is to make your life simple as an educator, making sure that your students can log in and you have most of the information set up so that they're working as independently as possible. I also want to point out that you can change your teacher settings. So as you're previewing things in our lesson library, running things from your group instruction tab, when you play these things back, if you're at the front of the room and you have a group of students, you want to make sure that they're also working independently. What is that sort of 80-20 rule? Most of the kids in my classroom need these specific settings. Click on your name in the upper right-hand corner and you'll find the teacher settings button here. This allows you to go in and make some tweaks for that group instruction. Whether you're running it for my resources, group instruction, this is where you're going to make those modifications. For all of my groups, I really wanna slow it down and provide that extra support. You can change your group to one-click autoplay. You can change the default number of choices and create that custom set. You are in charge of those groups. Coming down, celebrations, reinforcement, it's all here at your fingertips to adjust. I'm gonna encourage you to play around with this. Play around with your teacher settings, adjust your student settings. Know that when your students log in, they can always come in and exit out. They can access their settings at the top of the screen. They can make adjustments to make sure that they are playing in a way that is independent, providing success and moving them forward. We're excited to work with you this school year. Let us know how we can continue to support you. Happy visiting, and we look forward to talking to you soon.